Hi, I'll just letting you know that this video about the Wheel of Time is mostly spoiler free and meant to be an overview of the series and why I like it so much. As I said, there are minimal spoilers in this video, save for some purposefully vague references. Okay, okay, enjoy. You ever have one of those books, movies, video games, or TV shows that just mean something to you whenever they're mentioned? Like for example, if someone referenced Star Wars to me, I'd be transported back into a particular time and place of innocent booger-eating adolescence. Well, The Wheel of Time is like that, except that it doesn't bring back my childhood memories. In fact, I started reading this mammoth-sized series in 2016, back when I looked like this. And I spent two weeks hospitalized on suicide watch, and when fighting for my life, I literally kill time by reading The Wheel of Time. I've admittedly covered how Wheel of Time helped save my life when I wrote for the Escapist magazine before, but with the recent new round of casting news regarding the TV adaptation, or the Amazon Prime adaptation rather, I figured it was time to give the uninitiated potential Wheel of Time readers or watchers a refresher on the series. And speaking for myself, I adored these books. After all, The Wheel of Time offered a great outlet of escape from my pain. But today, I'm going to cover more of what I like so much about The Wheel of Time and why I think you should give it a read even beyond the obvious rationale that it's being adapted into a TV series. So for a little, a LITTLE background, The Wheel of Time is a 14 book epic fantasy series created by Robert Jordan, though the total amount of books is 15 when counting the prequel novel. And no, don't read that one first. The first Wheel of Time book, The Eye of the World, debuted in 1990 and the final book, A Memory of Light, was published in 2013. The original author author Robert Jordan died in 2007, and when that unfortunate event occurred, then up-and-coming fantasy author Brandon Sanderson used Jordan's nose to finish the series. He did an excellent job and is why I consider him to be the greatest crozer since Mariana Rivera. The plot of the Wheel of Time series follows numerous different characters in, as Wheel of Time aficionado Daniel Green puts it, a renaissance-era fantasy setting, with the most notable characters in the series being a youthful ragtag group of young adults who live in the Two Rivers, a place so far away from meaningful society that the middle of nowhere probably considers it to be the middle of nowhere, just like Nebraska. Admittedly, the idea of young farm kids going on an epic adventure is hardly new in the realm of fiction, but there is a reason as to why this trope pops up time and time again. A hero that goes from nobody and turns into somebody is entertaining storytelling, and from beginning to end, going from no one to the most like powerful being on earth is a lot of character growth. In The Wheel of Time, the main characters are Sheep Herder, Randall Thor, Farmer Matt Cawthon, Blacksmith Apprentice Perrin Arbiara, Village Wisdom Nene Valmera, and Egwin Elvira, the, who is the mayor's daughter. These characters eventually surpass their humble beginnings to where eventually these characters go on an epic journey with a lot of character development. Hell, even characters who start powerful like the wise magic user Moraine, her trusted warder and bodyguard Lan, Princess Elaine Tracken, and Master Storyteller Tom Marilyn grow exponentially and morph into something completely different by the end of their story arcs. Making these characterizations even better is how the series is simultaneously a character study and a power fantasy. Seeing as many characters start out as lowly small town farmers, they grow exponentially in new and surprising ways. When compared with other fantasy series, I struggle to think of so many numerous characters with such transformative arcs in terms of social and political status, combat skills, and raw power by the end. In this regard, the Wheel of Time is unmatched. Of course, to help tell this epic story is 14 books, not counting, as I said, the prequel novel. For sure, the lengthiness of the series can be off-putting. After all, these books are sizable, and the series is a bit bloated around the middle. But the Wheel of Time being this long has a lot of positives. For starters, most of the books range from good to amazing, though there is one exception, and despite reading these books being a daunting task that can test the patience of even the most skilled readers, there is a comfort of knowing that there will be more stories to look forward to with these likable, interesting characters in its incredibly expansive world. Like, even after reading the first book, The Eye of the World, there's a certain level of excitement to be had where you can look forward to even more of this story because it's such a lovely, rich, and detailed world. And make no mistake, The Wheel of Time is a detail-rich series. While the world map is very unassuming, 
assuming. The various different cultures, customs, and types of people within the series are diverse with many different and interesting backgrounds. Due to these different cultures and beliefs, the way one character approaches a situation is usually always different from all the other characters. Arguably, even more importantly, are the political ramifications and manifestations of these cultures and values and how they stir conflict and intrigue. Even though, yes, the main antagonists work for an evil Sauron-like entity, there are also more human villains that stand against the protagonist for various reasons, ranging from greed to in-depth ideological differences. Additionally, and even when talking about those who serve the Sauron-style Dark One, those baddies also have their own sense of internal politics and align with the Dark One for different reasons. As far as rogues galleries go, these villains are very fleshed out, like a cabal of evildoers with the most extreme one essentially being the Wheel of Time's rendition of Darth Vader. And the infighting between the antagonists isn't just cool, because they have various fats and meetings that show that they are characters with dimension and presence when compared to other fantasy stories. Like with a lot of these villainous characters, they you just learn that they shouldn't be fucked with, not just because they're evil, but their abilities with the one power are nearly unmatched. And speaking of the one power, the Wheel of Time's magic system is a hard magic system with some soft elements layered on top of it. Despite how the magic is initially portrayed as a Tolkien-style system, where the POV characters would gaze at these magical feats and not understand how they're doing them, the magic and the abilities of those who channel the one power become very deep. The various feats that the magic users perform are incredible, but eventually we learn that they can be limited by how much power they can channel and knowledge about certain weeds, or spells rather. This is especially true for male channelers who are magic users destined to go insane. Explained in detail, men and women magic users channel different parts of the one power, and due to plot that occurs before the series even starts, the male half of the one power is compromised by the dark one. This said compromise is referred to as, and don't laugh, the Dark One's Taint. I said don't laugh, what are we, five? For many in the Wheel of Time, using magic isn't a choice. Some characters are just born with the ability to channel magic and they can't hide from it no matter how hard they try. For many characters, being able to channel is something that just happens over time. And when men use the one power, even if accidentally, they are instantly connected to it and doomed to go insane as if they were partaking in a mosh pit at a Slayer show. As morbid as it sounds, this is possibly my favorite aspect of the Wheel of Time. Male magic users, even one good people are like ticking time bombs as their madness grows over time, over the course of the novels. And as far as plot elements go, it's like a series-long Alfred Hitchcock-style ticking clock. More importantly, however, I relate to the mental health aspect and the fact that male magic users go insane, because if you know me, I have a lot of mental health problems. OCD, bipolar 2, depression, anxiety, the works. And when reading how some characters are trying to hold everything together in spite of their decaying mental state, these stories hit me incredibly close to home. Home, and I'm guessing the same can be said for other fans in similar shoes like mine, and have a somewhat difficult time from deciphering reality from fiction. I absolutely love it. The magic dynamic further defines the series' political factions. Factions like the Shan Chan, who are conquerors, the Native American-style warrior society Aiel, the corrupt religious zealots in the White Cloaks, and most notably there's the female magic users called the Aes Sedai, who are often feared by common folks. All these factions, and many others that are invented as the series moves on, on, are highly detailed and usually have their own internal politics and rivals. In this regard, the series is very deep and leads into some great conflicts and battles within those said factions. The magic using Ace Sedai in particular have numerous different and alternative perspectives and internal politicking. Seeing as they channel the One Power, they are among the most powerful factions of the Wheel of Time series, and from the very start, characters with various different backgrounds and social and political upbringing spill their opinions about the Ace Sedai, whether ignorant, fearful, awestruck, or a combination of all three. There's a ton of depth here, with more and more added as more specific magic abilities and non-human creatures are introduced to the story. With all this being said though, this isn't to say that the Wheel of Time is without fault. The series has a bit of a slog in the middle, and book 10 in particular is a long book where nothing really happens, save for explaining what a particular character is doing during a world-changing event, and a couple of mid-series plot lines that go far too long. But with that being said, the Wheel of Time rebounds and finishes incredibly strong. The books are heavily detailed in terms of both literal description and character development, and this is why I keep finding myself coming back. Despite how reading the whole series is an undertaking, it's so incredibly worth the time and emotional investment. I absolutely adore these characters, and I love spending a mental vacation within the Wheel of Time. And honestly, what more could anyone want from an epic fantasy series? Hey y'all, I'd just like to thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell. And uh, for my very special patrons, I want to say thank you. 
especially to Slasher Avails and my mom. I uh, love you guys. Thank you for supporting what I do. Thank you so much.